All right, well, thanks for joining us today. Um, we're going to be doing a very thorough presentation, I believe, about how TAS Market Profile and TSNN are, are bringing you some products today that we feel are very valuable in your trading on a day-to-day -day basis and on investment purposes. So what we want to you know, look at first is we want to look at some of the basis behind some of the information that is on the TSNN site about you know, the task market profile products. A little bit about market profile. Um, we're going to go through some of the mechanics of, of how the signal box, which is on the TSNN site, um, may be of value to you, and also the videos that we do every day, that I personally do every day, and, and how those may provide some kind of um, high probability risk rewards scenarios to you in your everyday trading. In the arenas of the major currency pairs, the commodities that most people in the world look at, the golds, the, the crude oils of the world, the things like that, and last but not least, most of the major market indices that provide some kind of barometer to the larger countries in the world and the investment community. So first of all, we're going to take a look at uh, a, you know, market profile in general. And we're going to go through some slides here. I'm going to try to be as quick as I can because we really want to kind of get to the meat and potatoes of what we're going to ultimately be providing as value, I think, today through the TFN Insight. So I'm going to go to my next slide here. A little bit about us at Task Market Profile. We're a lot of seasoned veteran traders, um, quite a few you know, degrees in statistics, mathematics, engineering, do a lot of programming. Um, we do automated trading. Um, we've got a proprietary trading group that we house here in Asia. I'm in Asia right now, by the way, and it's very early in the morning. <laughs> and uh, wh what we want to do here is just kind of go right into, you know, from a mathematical statistical standpoint, that's kind of the way we look at the markets, and we always try to put probabilities in our favor and also, you know, at, at the very least try to, you know, risk a couple of points to make quite a few each time we place a trade, and you know, somebody told me a long time ago that you know, successful trading is supposed to be boring, and we've always tried to keep that in mind. I always try to keep it in a container of you know, probabilities, statistics, mathematics, and when we look at you know, taking stops or or you know, being wrong versus being right, we always try to lose a little, lose a little, lose a little, make a lot. That's kind of the theme of of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis with our trading. And uh, a lot of people will, by the way, you know, make a little, make a little, make a little, lose a lot. And that is the exact opposite, we feel, of what a successful trader you know, should be doing. And by the way, mathematically, that just doesn't work out over time. So let's just go right into a general market profile overview. Um, what we're going to be looking at here is just the original market profile, which was developed by Pete Stottlemyre. And I worked with him for a couple of years in the Chicago Board of Trade up on floor 38. He's a very nice fella, uh, smart as a whip. I mean, just, you know, Ph.D. in statistics and mathematics. But what he did was he sold a concept ultimately to the Chicago Board of Trade, and that concept really, that he developed was really dividing the day into 30-minute sections. And these are, if you look over to the left, you've got, I just picked out uh, a, an instrument that had a, um, a point value from 1060 up into 1077. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the first bar, and that was the first 30 minutes of the day that I had pulled out this example. And that first 30 minutes of the day, price span was between 1063 and 1070, and I hope everybody can see that. The next 30 minutes of the day, and this is, you know, generally like a normal bar chart using a 30-minute time frame. Uh, the next 30 minutes was 1066 up into 1072. The next 30 minutes, 1065 up into 1072, and so on and so on. Now, what Pete Stottlemyre had done is he, uh, this original market profile view, he labeled the first 30 minutes of the day B, the next 30 minutes C, the next 30 minutes D. And as you can tell, this, this is just a derivation of what we talked about in the first uh, slot here on the left. 
So as we go through the day, we're labeling the 30-minute sections a different letter. And at the end of the day, he collapsed that data onto itself to the left. And then at the end of the day, after you collapse that data across to the left, you've got something that looks like this. And this is what we call a completed profile. Now, you may be asking yourself, how does this provide value to my everyday trading? Well, we're going to go through a step-by-step -step process of how this may provide a lot of value to your day-to-day -day trading. And what we want to look at is you want to kind of remember this picture here. And if you look at this from a statistical mathematical standpoint and you recall maybe some class you took about you know, Statistics 101 or, or maybe some elementary probability courses, you've got what looks like very similar to a bell curve turned on its side. And that's the concept here. We want to try to figure out where the value area is or the fair auction, as we call it, for volume at, uh, volume at price <laughs> or time at price. Now, most of the time you'll see, you, you'll, you know, you can, you can, let's just go back to this screen for just a second. As you look at this, most of the time on any charting package that you have, you'll, you'll notice that most of the time you're, you're able to view, okay, this 30 minutes, I want to look at the volume that happened for that 30 minutes or that five minutes or whatever, and you see a, um, a volume versus time chart. Now, what we're going to look at is volume versus price. And basically, this is volume and this is price. Just as we looked at in our previous screen, this is volume or time at price. Okay? Usually, you see it like this. Now, you're seeing it like this. Now, I'm just going to read this. In market terms, we use standard deviations to determine where the market spends most of the time and where it spends the least time. Another way of putting this is determine where the volume accumulates and where it does not. <clears throat> so if we use standard deviations and we look at this as that belt curve type scenario, if, you, if you've studied any about bell curves, you know that you know, 83 point whatever percent of the time, most of the data will lie within a certain range. And that sample of that range of 83% is the envelopes basically rely on standard deviations. So this is the same concept here that we've, de you know, that Pete developed actually, and we've made some very good derivations of, of the, the original market profile where, you know, we've taken a lot of subjectivity and turned it into a very rules-based, objective way of looking at the markets. Um, the unfortunate thing about the original market profile is it was relatively subjective and if you talk to Pete on any given day, it would be something that, um, you know, would, would be an endeavor to persevere, as they say, because he, he had a lot of different thoughts and, and it was like, you know, it was an artistic type view instead of a rules-based view. Um, it, he, just, he just found a way that was really neat to organize the data that was happening during the day. And what we've done is taken that organization of data and turned it into a very, um, gray box type scenario for buy and sell signals. So again, we've turned it on its side. We've determined the standard deviations away from this peak of distribution. So in, st in statistics, um, you've got peak of distribution. We call these points of control, or point of control is the high node in the value area. I know this is probably not making a lot of sense right now to you, but I think it's going to become very clear in the near future. All right, so once we know the value, the value area is, it's only then we can know where, with confidence what is considered cheap or expensive to market participants. We also pinpoint bargains in the market at extremes. So our fair auction or value area is limited by this node and this node, okay? Now, I refer to these as inflection points a lot of time. Inflection points are the definition of inflection is basically where a turn can happen and that level or point either in time or price or whatever based on the, the, 
the natural definition of that, um, we're going to define these areas as inflection points or unfair highs or unfair lows of our profile. Okay, let me go back to this for a second. So the definition here, unfair high, unfair low, point of control. So eventually we're going to show you something in this webinar that basically takes a lot of this and just puts it in a quick view for you. And our signal box, which is on the TSMN site, which I, I, I actually developed that for us, for our traders, and I know you can find some value out of it. That particular whole mechanism follows in line with this concept we're talking about. Uh, a little bit about some of the things we base. We have you know, quite a few number of indicators that we have developed based around the general concept I just talked about. Um, these are on the Bloomberg terminal. Um, they're, you know, we've, we've got these on about seven different uh, software platforms right now. We are actually developing and almost finished with our own charting execution platform, which these will be hard-coded in. So, you know, we're a shop that, uh, I'm in Asia, and we've got quite a few programmers on board. We do automation. We do uh, software development. Um, but our, our bread and butter is what we have done with market profile in general and our derivatives of market profile and these indicators that uh, I speak globally about with Bloomberg events and most of the major world uh, global cities is all based around that original market profile structure. Um, so what we want to do is, is we want to take that basic definition that I talked about about market profile now and just one of the indicators that we have, and this is going to ultimately fold into uh, some quick views that we're going to do on the TFN Insight, but as we look at those profiles and we look at volume at price, one of the indicators that we have developed is called our market map. And this is on the Bloomberg terminals so on quite a few other terminals, but we've got that high volume node or point of control we define as yellow. Our unfair highs are the top of our red or the top of that um, bell curve statistical sample is, is where red meets purple, and then on the bottom where red meets purple, and, by, and the same down below. So the concept is, is when trading is within the fair auction, these are where market participants have determined that this is the fair play area. When we move away from those fair play or fair auction areas or value areas, there's either too many sellers or too many buyers, and the market is called imbalanced. So this is a balanced market when we're within these nodes, or excuse me, these uh, fair auctions up here and down here, and you can see how they act within those fair auctions. And when we get outside those fair auctions, price will move relatively quick through these holes in the marketplace. Again, I've said a lot here. Uh, you know, one of the things I want to talk about is, you know, with this particular picture, is people generally, if they trade long enough, they seem to always fall in love with shorting things. And they, they fall in love with shorting things because things generally go down or sell off quicker than they go up unless you're in the dot-com era of the NASDAQ back in uh, the late 90s. That was, things went up pretty quick those days. But generally speaking, things sell off a lot quicker than they, than they go up. And investors usually are the people who are long, long hold type scenarios, and traders usually love the shorts, and the reason they love those shorts is because if you can, you know, compress time and make the most money you can in the shortest amount of time, that generally falls within the shorting arena. All right. Now, this, this is the same concept. You want to try to trade where you have the most probabilities of the larger risk reward scenarios. So if you're trading within this area here, you've got somewhat of a limited capacity to, to make money. Um, and when we get outside these value areas and you know where these value areas are defined, you should be able to have a relatively um, fast moving price action, which means a lot to you as a trader or investor because you get to make the most money or the most points within the shortest amount of time. 
Now, what we want to do here is take that general bell curve, original market profile concept, along with our market maps. And what we've done at past market profile is we've come in and we've said, all right, remembering what we just talked about, we've created what we call these boxes or dynamic VAPs on the Bloomberg terminal. And this unfair high here, and I'm going to show you these in real time. <clears throat> so what we did is we took that unfair high of the original market profile of that bell curve type statistical sample. Here's the unfair low we've defined as a green line. The unfair high is a red line, and the point of control or peak of distribution is a blue line. Now, these are automatically outputted algorithms where you do not have to set them, you don't have to adjust them, you don't have to do anything. As, as the price or the bar chart is moving forward, these particular algorithms output automatically, and these particular unfair highs, point controls, and unfair lows are on traders' screens with these indicators. Now, <clears throat> again, we're going through a very basic primer of what's behind the curtain on the signal box and the videos that we do every day that are on the TFN Insight. So let me go to the next screen. Again, the top line in case the top of the red high value area in the price map, the center line, point of control, and the bottom line indicates the bottom of the high value area. Dynamic profiles further simplify market maps, which are already an improvement on classic market profile. To precisely pinpoint entries, targets, stops, while enhancing trade management. All right. Some general guidelines to trade these profiles. I'm not going to, you know, bore you to death by, you know, going through a bunch of rote uh, definitions and rules constantly. We have a, a lot of these. Uh, we have intro videos on all these indicators, and this one in particular. There's actually a, a, a very good, um, I feel, intro video on Signalbox on the TFNN website, which covers quite a bit of this. But what we want to do here is just basically say that there are rules around these particular boxes or dynamic valves, these three lines. And we want to keep these rules in mind from a long-term standpoint standpoint and a short-term standpoint because, you know, what we always want to do is try to, you know, combine time frames or use that word, the confluence of time frames where we feel like we have, uh, you know, somewhat of an edge or a high probability setup that we can take advantage of as a trader and also be able to place our stops, you know, basically on the other side of the fence around these inflection points or profiles that we're using to gauge this trade. So just a basic you know, non-directional chop. Right in here, um, you're, you're basically afforded the opportunity, if you, if you just look at this area right here on this one box, to you know, sell the highs, buy the lows. No shorts, get long and stay long. If we're above profiles, it's okay to be long and not okay to be short. So as we look at this, we're above, profile, we're above our box, Okay to be long, not okay to be short. Same thing, okay to be long, not okay to be short. We're up in here, okay to be long, not okay to be short. Same scenario. And as we move forward, I'm, I think this is going to come together because I'm going to go through a real trading example, um, and then we're going to move into, you know, live data. Okay. This is just a basic chart I put together with these profiles, unfair high, point of control, unfair low, and how this walkthrough may become relatively logical to you. So, again, this is where price action is right now over here on the, on the far right, and these are profiles that are in force right now. All right. Remember the simple rule. Don't be short when price is trading above dynamic profile. Okay. Don't be long when price is trading below dynamic profile. All right? Same thing, same scenario here. Some of our profiles, which are in force for a long time, really predict some low volatility situations that you can buy premium on options around. That's a whole different conversation, by the way. But, you know, if you're reading these in an artistic manner, um, along with our rules-based environment, 
you're noticing that the longer the horizontal slant is on these particular profiles, the more impact this one particular profile may have. And in this instance, since it's a thin, long profile, um, we, were, we are expecting a relatively hard breakout away from here. Now, you know, the thinner they are, the wider they are predicting high volatility, and, you know, the breakout fashion that we just talked about from low volatility, um, all these things are, are kind of an artistic view, but what we've done with Signalbox and, the, the, you know, the videos, obviously, we kind of walk you through the the day-to-day -day processes of, a, of quite a few instruments, um, I think we've made it relatively easy where you really don't have to have an artistic view. It's basically a rules-based environment view. So again, if, if we're long from here and we're in a breakout, now we could have been in a breakout back here and then you know got stopped out. Um, stop placement depends on your risk tolerance. However, based on market profile principles, we expect a fast vertical move above or below dynamic profiles in this instance since they're thin and long. So when we have our breakout, we're buying this again. And remember, it's okay to get stopped out, folks. That is part of the game. I get stopped out at least 50% of the time on my own trading, and that's just the way the ball bounces with that. But if you're risking you know, a point or two every time by a stop, but every, all your profit targets are three, four, five, <coughs> excuse me, ten points away, um, you know, if, you, if you do that 50-50 being correct math, you know, that math works out over time in your favor. So the same principle here, we're going to break out, we're getting long. Your stops below here, your stops below here, based on your risk tolerance, obviously, and whether you want to let this thing bounce around within the profile and give it a little bit of noise factor to be wrong, that's up to you. But again, we're, we're just going through general concepts today. Um, so we're long from there. We have a new, new profile up here or new supply in the marketplace. Um, so, when you you know one of the things I talk about in the videos is when we see new supply coming in, it, that that particular move in the market may be over. Um, so we're looking for, you know, I, we don't have a, too, enough information here to make this statement, but I'm just going to say that you know we're in long mode. Let's say this is a long term chart, and we're going to look at uh, long term charts in a second. You know, this may be a support area to buy again. But the good news is, is we know where to put our stops right below. We know we can reverse our position because right here, it's okay to be short, not okay to be long, if you remember our general rules. So, <clears throat> you know, we're long from here. We may have taken off some of the longs here. We may have gone short here. Remember, this is our stop, this is our stop, or this is our stop. I generally, on a lot of... A lot of time frames that we look at, I, I ignore some of the POCs or that point of control area. But on a long-term basis, on weeklies and monthlies, these, these definitely have an impact on what we're doing. So if we're long from here, we have a new profile up here. We may want to take some weight off. We're below profiles here. We may want to go short. And we've got a new profile appearing here, and we may want to take off those shorts, and we may be wanting to sell resistance here because we've got an inflection point that our signal box would have pointed out immediately that it's a high probability area to trade. Let me go back to that. So, again, this is this is kind of going through the the mechanics of what's behind the the, the things on the TFN Insight and a lot. You know, and the signal box was developed really for our traders to make it a little bit easier so there's not basically too much subjectivity in anything that, that they're looking at. All right, so one of the other, you know, the other, we've got quite a few indicators. We've talked about one specifically today. Our boxes are dynamic VAPs. But what we want to do here is look at one more. Um, this is our navigator, and this is a color-coded system in a histogram format that really gives some uh, bias directional, uh, you know, concepts to the profiles themselves. So, and I'll show you these on our on our real time charts on gold or, or a couple other things maybe after the webinar that people want to see. Um, but it's basically this is not an MACD indicator down below. This is just the way we display it, and a lot of these color coded. 
set definitions and terms are on our website. We've got a, a manual that's about 120, 130 pages long, cheat sheets, uh, videos on each indicator, and uh, things of that nature. But basically, these are keys to feel like you've got either probabilities to be long or probabilities to be short based around the inflection points of the profiles in general that we've already talked about. So, again, this is the type of scenario I'm talking about. You know, we're using boxes or dynamic BAPs combined with these profiles. Um, this is one of my favorite setups when we've got, a, you know, lower highs in Navigator and higher highs in price action, and we're breaking down below profiles at the same time. Remember, it's okay to be short, not okay to be long in that scenario, and, and these are just putting pieces of the puzzle together. Um, and, I, I, you know, I'm not going to go through all the definitions here of how to read this indicator, but it's just something to allow you to understand that th this is a puzzle and we're putting pieces together to try to increase the probabilities all the time. Okay, uh, let me get back to that. What, what I'm going to do now is, for starters, I'm going to bring up one of my Bloomberg charts here. This is gold and you know, obviously, gold had a huge run up. This is a weekly chart, and this is our dynamic VAPs or boxes, dynamic profiles, our unfair low, unfair high, and POC. Now, this has got real-time data, and this is gold on the Bloomberg Terminal weekly view. Here is our daily view of gold. As you can see, we're using profiles and the same information. This is our navigator down here on the same product. And here's our 240-minute view. Same information, same product. And what we want to do here in, in this example that we're given right now is, you know, we want to, you know, we've we always feel that looking at things on multiple time frame views and trying to find out where things line up in relatively the same neighborhood on multiple time frame views as far as inflection points, profiles in general, um, those, those, are, those are neat things when they happen. <clears throat> and those are areas where you can have the confidence and feel like you have some probabilities or edge to be more, you know, more correct than, than not correct in those fashions. And the good news is, is you know where to say uncle or where to place your stops because if we break through that, you know, mindset that we had, that we had the probabilities are in our favor if we're below certain levels, then if we breach those levels, you know, all bets are off and you just got to call it a day. You're never going to always be right or wrong. These are, this is kind of a psychological paragraph here I'm given. Um, you know, picking tops and bottoms is very dangerous, and what the profiles do is they allow you in multiple time frame views to have the confidence that things may be turning in your favor. And if we're, you know, crude oil's, you know, been getting killed lately, um, you know, I actually personally went long some crude oil today and the day before, actually, I got stopped out. But it was based on you know, kind of green shoots being seen in breaching some lower time frame dynamic VAPs or boxes on the upside. So looking at gold, because I know Tom's a big fan of, of gold, and I'm, I'm a big fan of his and gold, so we're just going to focus on gold right now. And we're going to look at, you know, why when gold started breaking out above profiles back in 2008, 2009, it really gave you no reason because we never broke down below our profiles that we automatically output here. I mean, we might have one close below here, but it never gave you a reason to get short until we started having some volatility, wider profiles, and then I'm just going to focus on when the market turned, when the gold market turned from, you know, it's okay to be long, it's okay to trade the range, it's not okay to be long because we started breaching below profiles here and then here, and then we stayed below profiles basically um, all the way down into where we're at today. So these are leverage points or inflection points that are broken, and that breakdown on the weekly started happening about 1729 on our weekly, but was first, this is our daily, 
but was first identified on a daily around, you know, I'm sorry, 1777 or so in this contract as it started breaking down below profiles on a daily, then the weekly confirmed that, all right? So if you're a long-term trader and you want to, you know, trade on trade where the, where the trend is in your favor or the trend is your friend or, and all those concepts, you've really got multiple time frame views here on profiles to, to see that, it, okay, you know, we have started breaking down on the daily. We broke down on the weekly right here. Now we're definitely... <laughs> we definitely can't go long right now un unless we want to start trying to pick bottoms. It's okay to get short, not okay to be long. And the only way we'd start going long is that if we were at a major inflection point or a market turn situation by putting some more pieces of the puzzle together and looking at some profiles from the past and their relevance or averaging of those profiles from the past. <clears throat> now, I'm going to focus on our weekly here. Uh, I was actually... You know, doing some videos for TFNN back in the summer, and you know, me and Tom kind of commiserated about gold and where it was going to go and where it had been a lot. And you know, twelve twenty was a number that we had talked about. It we had to get back above twelve twenty when we pierced it to really start thinking about going long in a contra um, trade fashion. Our navigators, this particular dark red um, color scheme here, allows us to. You know, it's, it's okay to trade against the current trend down. Um, we started breaking above inflection points here on the bottom of our most recent profile. That was a fair auction here. We got up into our um, you know upper limits, upper bands of this profile, and you know we talked about okay, it's we've had a good run up, we've had a good contra tr against the trend trade here. Now we're at the upper limit of the of the of the box or the profile. It's okay to. T to, to at least take off profits here and maybe go short. And then we you know, proceeded downward from there. We've, this product's obviously very volatile. If you guys follow it, you'll definitely know what I'm talking about. But recently, um, in fact, on the videos, I have been speaking about, um, you know, we, we have to get back above 1288 to even consider going long. Well, that hasn't happened uh, after we broke 1288. We, We've obviously been selling off, and we're at 12.43 right now. So here's our daily, and we caught a lot of different inflection points on our daily to confirm some of these moves that were happening on our weekly. But right now, you know, here's 12.73. That's obviously below 12.88 on the bottom of our profile on our weekly. But what that did is that definitely confirmed when we broke 12.73, you cannot go long this right now, All right? And... You can only go long in a contra against the long-term trend fashion. Here's our 240 view, 240 minute view of gold. And the only way by looking at our profiles and, and kind of going through our rules-based environment that you could even think about nibbling on the long side now is if we got above 1250, and that would be a very short-term trade scenario with stops down below 1250 and not putting a big position on, all right? The confirmation by using this one indicator alone is to get back above 1288 and be off to the races and place stops below 1288, and your targets on a longer-term basis will be 1369. All right, and then you'll have to rethink the equation up there. Now, you know, how does this fit into the products on the TFNN side? What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the signal box on the TFNN side. And I'm going to try to, I hope, I hope everybody can see this. All right, I'm going to go to gold. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, as you can see, what, what this color-coded scheme does, let me define that first. It's what, it's, it's what we call our Vega indicator. And, again, we're trying to cram a lot into one hour, so I'm sorry to just, you know, brush on topics that probably deserve a little bit more time. But if you look at, gold across every time frame that this particular little web-based uh, signal system delivers, it's red. Gold is red. Okay? That means Vega is red. That means we're below profiles on each time frame that this particular little web-based application covers on this product called gold. So, and what it tells you is we've been short 
Vega for 17 bars. If that's a 17 or a 12, it looks like a 17. We've been below profiles for 17 60-minute sessions on our 60-minute profile. We've been below profiles on our 240-23 five days. We've been below profiles on our daily gold profiles. And on our weekly, we've been, we've actually been, you know, we've uh, had two closes and one extra bar this week, three bars in below profile mode. Now, the good news is, too, is that as you mouse over these, it gives you the, the top of the box, the POC point control at the bottom. If you remember me mentioning that 1288 area, that is easily seen as we mouse over here. Our daily bottom is 1273. As we just saw on the chart, the top's $1,299, $1,300 an ounce. The 240 and so on down the grid, we're showing the inflection points on these time frames real time as they happen. All right. Now, <clears throat> obviously, the weekly profile, the information is going to stay in force for a lot longer. Um, and again, these are automatically outputted. Now, there's a lot of different ways to use the signal box, but you know, the, the only way that I would start going long gold is if I started seeing some, and that would be a contra trade back into the, you know, weekly bottom 1288 as the initial target. If I started seeing green here as we were moving above profiles on a 60 minute, then got some confirmations here on our 240, possibly, you know, this starts uh, turning into a stop manner right here. And, and by the way, there's some definitions down at the bottom. I mean, this is a very, we made this to be super easy and informational for people using it. It's not something that's very cryptic. And if you watch the video <clears throat> on the TFNN website about the signal box, I think you'll, you'll kind of uh, get hip to the program of what this thing might be able to do for you in, as far as your trading and providing, um, you know, whether you should be long or short and where to pick your battles based on the inflection points. Now, what it also does is it provides, um, uh, you know, a signal, if you will, like on wheat, we're at the bottom of a weekly profile, bottom of the box, 644, within 10% <laughs> above or below, and that arrow is telling you we're in the upper 10% above the weekly unfair lows. So this would be considered a battle point or a high probability area to pick a battle possibly from the long side, uh, since we've got the error point above, on wheat. The good news is, if you're trading in a long-term fashion, you know to put your stops below 644, right? We don't have any cooperation happening here, uh, not too much on our 60 or 240. So you want to, you know, if you're trading and trying to trade these inflection points on a long-term basis, and I personally like to use the long-term weekly daily inflection points lining up, um, as my battle point for, 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 for high amounts of leverage, um, remembering that, you know, weekly inflection points take precedence over daily, over 240, over 60. Um, those are the areas I really want to pick my battles in trading. If you're a shorter-term trader, you can literally trade this as a red light, green light system based on the shorter-term time frames or longer-term time frames. So, again, how would you like to, you know, trade gold around profiles on a long-term time frame, well, you know, we've done it for you. you. You need to look at this as a shorting opportunity when long-term profiles are red, and you need to look at it as a long-term opportunity when long-term profiles are green. So let's just go to the S&Ps. Everybody's uh, always interested in what this particular market's doing, and I just, for the life of me, um, again, like, like most traders have never seen an S&P run like this. Um, and we, I think we're up 30% for the year this year on a, on a major market index. That's, that's pretty impressive for starters, but it's also, um, you know, it, it, <laughs> it, you know, as traders, you try to ignore common sense sometimes. I mean, the common sense of it is, is the U S has still got some problems. You know, everybody's, uh, having a hard time finding a job still. I think one fifth of the population's on food stamps. But yet, the market keeps going up. Um, if we look at our information on the signal box and look at inflection points as they happen, you really try to push that hunch factor aside, if you will, on 
where you think the S&P should be and trade it totally technical based on the same things that computer algorithms are, are trading on. And uh, you know, a lot of trading has gone to computers, obviously, and they don't really kind of take into consideration what the German Ministry of Finance may be saying tomorrow. They're trading on technicals. And I fully, fully believe that that's the way to look at the markets these days is to look at the technicals. And if you look at the S&Ps, there is zero reason to be short this. Zero. Okay? Unless we have some downturn and our 60-minute grids start turning red or, or maybe we start looking at, um, you know, our last inflection point on, on the long term was at 1705, as you can see, top of the box. We're well above there. Our daily, we have... 1799 is the top of the box, as you can see. Let's just call it 1800. If the market approaches this area, this will show top and error down and error or error up um, on our daily, and that would be a you know a trade against the current trend, shorting opportunity where you, where you know where to put your stops above. Now uh, we're looking at this real time, and I do not see any weekly or daily inflection points lining up. But what I do want to show you is uh, we do have some inflection points lining up. We've got the 10-year lining up with our 240 on daily and, and 240. So the bottom of our box is 106, excuse me, 126.3141. That's approximately 126 and 10 or 11 ticks, or 10 or 11 30 seconds on the 10-year. And the same situation on our 240. Now, as we've come down into the bottom of this box on our 10-year, on our daily, 10 years relatively non-directional right now. It's got a bias towards the upside, obviously, because we hadn't started breaking down on weekly profiles or daily profiles yet. But you've got a long opportunity here. And you've got a long opportunity because you've got a confluence of time frames with the same general neighborhood of inflection points happening at the same time. So you're provided a an inflection point, and a battle point, and you've got another time frame with the same neighborhood, and you know if we have a smaller term time frame start turning green in this instance, you've started clearing some profiles on smaller term time frames, which is kind of giving you the green shoot type situation that it's okay to start you know, trading that scenario. Now, Again, looking at gold, we do not have anything remotely close to looking longish, if you will. Now, we are providing the, the tops and bottoms here to show you when the profiles may be broken out or, or inflection points are reached. But the sad news is right now for gold is there's really no opportunity to go long yet. Um, there's a lot of opportunity to go short, but you know we've had a decent pullback. And based on the charts we just looked at, um, you know, things on our lows go lower a lot of times and things on our highs go higher. But to get short this product right now, this is our weekly. You were afforded the opportunity a couple of times this past week and the previous to key off of the 1288 area on the short side with stops right above or to stay out of the marketplace altogether and not go short and wait for this. Uh, to gravitate above 1288 to go long with stops down below. Now, this particular product really did that for you. I mean, as we were in this general area, the 1288 area, it was showing bottom and the arrow was pointing down. It was providing you that leverage point on gold <coughs> that it was, you know, okay to go short. And you started then having some more of these smaller term time frames turning south. But the good news is <clears throat> that you don't have weekly or daily inflection points happening all the time. But when they happen, those are the high probability areas to put a trade on it, in my opinion. So, excuse me. Oops. Let's look else. Let's look at the Japanese yen. I want to pick out a currency here, or actually the Australian dollar, and then we're going to look at the Japanese yen. So, mousing up, we've got a bottom here. Mousing over this, we got our bottom value at 92.26. Right? The Australian dollar has sold off hard this past year, and then we've kind of, 
you know, started breaking above profiles and then pulled back. And, you know, who knows what kind of trend we're in right now. I think we're in a relatively non-directional trend. But as you can see across the board, you know, these shorter-term time frames, the red light, green light system has really kind of taken this down into the bottom of our box on a weekly. And I want to show you that. I want to pull up our weekly chart. We'll pull up uh, the Australian dollar. And I'm going to show you that we are sitting at 92.26, is that bottom of the box on the signal box we just looked at. We're sitting right there. And we have come down and broken down below our unfair highs on our long term. And in my opinion, based on this signal box giving you this information real time when it happens and showing you the levels to key off of, you're obviously not, you know, you're not going to be to the tick all the time. But we did come down and hit this today. And this is a long opportunity in my opinion, and you know where to put your stops based on your appetite for risk below these areas. Now, here's our daily. I'm going to pull up our Australian dollar on our daily. And we're going to see that when we broke, we, you know, we could have picked a battle here at 92.96 on our daily inter intermediate term time frame that we're looking at, and the signal box definitely provided that. I want to show you that. 92.96, bottom of the box. And if you remember me talking about getting, you know, getting stopped out as part of this game, if you'd have picked a battle on our daily, we would have still been about right here on our weekly. So we would still be considered, you know, kind of, you know, not at the highest leverage, highest probability areas to pick to, to place a trade on our long term, but our daily intermediate term had provided some kind of trading opportunity and, you know, you would have gotten stopped out of that trade if you would taken it. But the bigger, higher probability setup is always the weekly versus the daily. So for long-term people or, or people that want to, you know, not trade as often or put the odds totally in their favor in the highest leverage fashion, the weekly situation here is probably the best bet. And that signal box provided those numbers well ahead of time, all right? So, you know, if the Australian dollar keeps going south here, you know, it dims the brakes. But I think you've, on a long-term basis and across the grid, got the highest probability situation in front of you with this. Um, let's take a look at the Japanese yen, and this is kind of a, a breakout situation that I wanted to go over, which actually affected the Nikkei, and we do videos on all these. So <clears throat> here's our Japanese yen, and again, you know, Looking at our profiles and then the breakout above, it's okay to be long, not okay to be short. We actually came back and retested that. That's one of my favorite trades, and I'll show you this in a second, is signal box provided you that leverage point, and then those green shoots on lower time frames really gave you zero reasons to get out of this long, even up until this point. It's provided trading opportunities because we've kind of gone back into profiles, but we haven't even closed or breached the bottom of our long-term weekly profiles. Now, I had been talking about in the videos that we were making lower highs, higher lows, you know, compression of our dynamic profiles, compression of boxes, if you will. And this ultimately leads to some kind of breakout from low volatility. Now, that happened last week. We broke out and closed above. Closes are very important here. But, you know, the good news is, is as we breach this, Signal box is letting you know, USDJPY, okay, look at that, all green across the board, and providing you those breakout numbers, 99.39 in this instance. Top of the box, 99.39. Now, the good news about this trade is it actually broke out, closed, and pulled back. And you, know, you never want to chase something. If you miss the trade, you miss the trade, no big deal. But it's very frustrating to buy a breakout too late, obviously, and then get stopped out because your risk tolerance, which always has to be in place, won't allow you to, to, to take that much heat. So we actually broke out, had a chance to pull back. We talked about in the videos, waiting until it got back into the 9940 area, former resistance, now support type scenario to buy this. And Signalbox actually let you know that, hey, we are back 
at the top of our box. It's giving you that indication, showing top and the arrow up, and we're back into a, a trading opportunity from the long side. Now, the good news is also is that I do a video on this particular instrument every single day of my life, and it's on the TFNN site. <clears throat> and it goes through these scenarios on the charts and also references the signal box about these particular trades. And it gives you uh, a landscape for the trading day, in my opinion, to move forward. So, you know, the signal box, again, is something you can lean on all day. It gives you the inflection points ahead of time and allows you to pick your battles, I think, in the right places. But also, the videos that are on the TFN Insight, and I'm going to show you those in a second here. Let me go to, this is our signal box page on the TFN Insight. There's a really cool video that I did on that. I think it's probably a little too long, but if you want to you know, li keep listening, it's a, it's a great, great piece. Um, here's our market research videos you can get a trial to, and they go through, you know, a currency report, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains. Every single day, we spend quite a bit of time on this. And, it, you know, somebody referred to these videos as kind of the fast, fast food version of, of research. You, you, they're, very, they're relatively short. I think they give some great insightful information for the day, the week, and the month. And you kind of go to the drive through pick them up, and go on your way. And they're very easy to listen to. So, but the good news is also is those videos are predicated on some of the information that we just talked about, where the leverage is, and also uh, make reference to the signal box quite a bit um, in, in the in the in the explanation of, of what we should be doing on a day-to-day -day basis for the British pound, the 10-year, the, the S&Ps, um, crude oil. Um, we, do, we actually, it's not on here, but we do a couple of videos on Asian and, and Europe markets. So we do the DAX, we do the Hang Seng, we do the, the Nikkei, and those are all in, in uh, let me see if I can, Let me see if I can uh, pull these up here and show you what they look like internally. Yeah, let me go here. Ah, here we go. So once you get a trial or a log into this, you know, I've got signal box and market videos here. I'm going to go into the market video section. And basically, this is what it looks like. I'm going to look at, uh, let's see, S&P futures. So it gives you basically about 17 different markets a day. Comes in, starts showing you exactly, you know, what we're thinking for the day based on our version of market profile and all of our information here, and uh, goes through three different time frames, weekly, daily. Obviously, we're at an inflection point here. We talked about this on the S&P video. That 1774, 75 was the target on the downside. We kissed that to the tick based on the past market profile information, as you can see. And this was today's free video, by the way, um, which you can always access off the TFN Insight. And, you know, as you know, today we kind of rallied back above 1790-something, I believe, 1795. But, you know, we talked about it's, it may be time to go long here based on our daily inflection point. You know where to put your stops, and you know to use a high-risk reward scenario for this because you've got targets above initially of, I believe, of 85 and then uh, 1800, so, or 1799, I believe. So... You know, the fact of the matter is, is the S&Ps are still in a long-term uptrend, but we're going to have pullbacks and we're going to have areas to buy support. We're going to have areas to trade against the trend uh, in the shorting fashion. So these videos kind of go through that type of concept and where we're at in the week, or excuse me, the month, the week, and the day. I'm going to cut that off. And, and you know, these are day after day after day um, the videos, we, we go through three of the major grains, um, and the currencies, we go through four major currency pairs 
every single day. So what I want to do now, okay, we've got a question. I want to kind of move into question answer mode here, if that's okay with you guys. First question is, on S&Ps, why is the box white with no information on the daily? Okay, let's go back to this, and let's go back to our signal box. All right, first of all, uh, I w there's a basic um, kind of primer grid down here if you want. Uh, it doesn't identify that I'm looking at right now, and that's basically identified in the video, the, the instructional video on this. But if we're, if we're white, that means that price action is within the profile on the daily. So that means we're, we're between 1774 and 1799. And by the way, Nancy, um, that's a great question. But if you had you know, been watching the signal box, you would have also seen that we had come down and kissed this 1774-45 area. Um, and we started moving you know, north on our 60 and lower term time frames, 240s. And that's what gave you the confidence or the confirming factors, you know, to trade that pullback into that support at 1774. Now, the, the yellow is, is a stop out of the current Vega trend either way, whichever way that was. Um, but again, you know, to, to answer your question, white or gray means we're, we're within that profile. And on that particular time frame, therefore, by definition, are considered non-directional. You know, the other day, I think we had on wheat, um, we had three inflection points lining up on the 240 daily and weekly, and we had come down into those inflection points from above, and I personally got long wheat the other day based on that information alone at around 644. And this is the December contract I'm talking about here. But if you look at wheat on a weekly, you'll notice that we've got 644 sitting there, and we had come down into this, and Signalbox just basically gave you that level to sit there and leverage that trade with stops down below based on your appetite for risk. And my stops I actually placed real tight at, I, I believe, 641 on a long-term basis with the upside being, I mean, tremendous in my opinion. Here's our daily. Let me just show you that um, as we're kind of running through wheat here. Our bottom of our box on our daily, 643, rounded off, 644, 60, 643, and 916. So we, we had, you know, multiple time frame confluence here. As you can see, bottom of the box, 644 on our weekly, bottom of the box, 643 on our daily, bottom of the box, 644 on our 240. So this will be considered having great long-term support on multiple time frames at 644 for this product. Now, here's our 244. Uh, grid here. Now, we came up and met some targets at 654 that we had talked about would be our original targets. So, in that particular trade, I was risking about three cents a bushel to try to make about 10. And that is a, you know, 10 to 1 risk reward scenario. And those are the kind of, you know, risk reward scenarios you really want to, you know, latch onto as a trader. Now, we have kind of pulled back off of that, you know, target initially. But, what I want to do here, this is our weekly. You know, we can let this trade run quite a bit because we're at the bottom of a long-term profile, and Signalbox basically, you know, will allow you to figure out, you know, where we're at in the grand scheme of things and whether, you know, you know the short-term momentum is okay to, to, to continue that with. So uh, is there any, are there any more questions? I just have gone through some basic examples here of the yen, the you know, the goals of the world and uh, wheat. Uh, does anybody have something they want me to analyze that uh, may or may not be on the signal box, maybe a, a stock or something like that? Because I'd be more than happy to, you know, do something that's not canned or cherry-picked. Apple, okay. Everybody's favorite stock. Okay. Let me just pull up Apple on a daily and weekly. <laughs> Well, let's let's do a little bit of history lesson with this. <clears throat> and when Apple started breaking out above long-term profiles, I, let me see if I can. Okay, remember, 
you know, we're above profiles, it's okay to be long, not okay to be short, gave you zero reasons to get out of this long trade, basically all the way up into the stratosphere. And when we started breaking down below profiles or coming off of inflection points back in uh, the beginning of 2012, we broke down for a little bit there, but then we were back in the game, in the, in the fair auction, one more breakout. Then, you know, we started looking at this from we're breaking down below weekly on fair lows around 650, and then we had some confirmations here around that same, you know, grid around 664. We were looking at multiple time frames to trade this at the time. Let's go back to our weekly. Um, and, you know, then we started looking at, at reasons to sell this because we had broken down below profiles, and I'm going to – this is our daily. I'm going to kind of blow this up a little bit here. We started looking for leverage points because the weekly – trend was down, we were below profiles, we started looking for daily inflection points to key off of to actually continue to short this, all right? Um, now, you know, your question probably is, what do we do now? Um, this is our daily most recent profile on Apple. Let me see if I can figure out what the close is here. It's hard to see. 521 is where we're at right now. 515 is our unfair low on our daily. Now, let's just go back to our weekly and understand that this particular profile you're going to have to ignore because we've got a problem with Bloomberg data on this. This is our most re recent profile. The reason I know that is because our Vega profit target is up here. So our current unfair high on this is 513. Guess what? 515 very similar is an inflection point on our daily, right? So we're above, excuse me, yeah, 515 is where our low inflection point on our daily. So we've got inflection points lining up on our weekly and daily around 513 to 515, and price action right now is 521. And we've kind of come down and bounced off of that one, two, three, four, five, six times, all right? That's providing... There's two things it's providing. It's providing a good reason that it, it might be okay to continue to go long here, considering that we're above profiles, it's okay to go long, not okay to go short, and we're provided a great trigger point, if you will, around 513, 515, based on those two long-term views. Uh, the good news is also is that you know where to put your stops. You've got to put your stops below 513 on a long-term basis. Now, where's our targets? I think initial targets above our 532, and then on our weekly, you know, we've got some room to move up here, obviously. Now, this is also the kind of pattern you want to see. You want to see breakout, breakout above weekly and for highs, consolidate, which is what it's doing, and kind of gather itself to be on the launching pad to move higher. But again, the good news is it's okay to get stopped out below 513 and get back in this game again using the same concepts and turning and rinse the same way you go to work every day. I mean, these are – I like this trade, but, you know, I hate – I don't have a crystal ball. I may be wrong. We may break down here. And if we get a weekly close, by the way, below 1213, a weekly close, that would be kind of damning for the current long scenario. Um, you know, it's, it's something that, uh, you know, to answer your question – uh, you know, I, my opinion is it's, it's, it's not a bad time to take a shot to go long again. I, I definitely wouldn't get out of this trade unless we, you know, broke down below 513 and closed on a weekly there. Nancy, does that answer your question? Let's look at, uh, let's look at IWM. Now, I don't, you know, pat ourselves on the back and, and try to, you know, use this in, in, you know, every talk that I give. But a lot of institutions, like we have this on the Bloomberg Terminal, we've, we've got thousands and thousands of people that access this same information on a daily basis in the institutional world. There's about 375,000 global subscribers to, to Bloomberg Terminals. Tom O'Brien is one of them. I'm one of them. Um, that terminal is relatively expensive, um, and 
you know, institutions and commercial players obviously don't have a problem spending two or three grand a month on a on a Bloomberg terminal. But thousands and thousands of that 375,000 user crowd use our information on a daily basis, um, you know, to help help them technically try to decipher what they should do. And uh, you know, for, like if if some firm has got to be long gold forever, and that's their mo, um, you know, they may use our information and can they? We do a lot of consulting for very large institutions, one of the largest grain operations in the U.S. Uh, we do consulting for, and we use this information that I'm talking about today um, to, to kind of walk them through scenarios that may be technically ripe for them to either buy or sell or get out of long-term positions. Um, IWM, we're obviously, we're obviously above profiles here, and we didn't get a lot of reasons to start going short this thing all the way up. Here's our Daily, just want to pull that up and see if there's anything we can glean off of our next profile down. Now, <clears throat> you know, the weekly provided breakouts recently at 105. We're trading 111 right now. We also found support down here at 191 because this particular unfair low was, was lining up with 138 previous unfair high. And these previous boxes have a lot of relevance in what's going on in the current profiles. But since they lined up, that pro and we knew this ahead of time, this was automatically outputted, this provided a really good trigger point and leverage point to buy support here with stops down below based on your appetite for risk. This was our first target, kind of reached that same situation as Apple. We kind of reach it. We, we obviously had a pullback here, and we talked about on Apple, you know, consolidating, looking like we're on the launching pad to move higher, but guess what? We had a deep, you know, spike down, and we need to get stopped out of stuff like that based on your appetite for risk. But also be prepared to mentally get back in the game and buy a move back up above these breakout areas, 105.63 in this particular stock. So, you know, what do we do now? We're obviously kind of, you know, things on their highs go higher kind of concept again right now, 111. Um, we're well above our most recent profiles. There's nothing new coming up on the horizon as far as profile goes. Here's our daily. But we are at an inflection point that was reached before. As you can see that, Bill, or Mr. Bill, <laughs> um, I was a big fan of that cartoon. Um, we, uh, we reached this inflection point that we knew about ahead of time already once and pulled back off of it. And now we're back again. All right. Now, if I'm a long player, I've got to look at that and, and, and really let it register because this is an inflection point that we've hit three times already. We're there right now. We've backed off twice off of that, um, and there's no, like, third time's a charm kind of thing where it's going to bust through. I mean, my opinion right now is, you know, that you're you're at an inflection point and you have to kind of, you know, do what you have to do based on the prop math probabilities here. And I wouldn't, you know, look a gift horse in the mouth or whatever that saying is. I'd, I'd start thinking about my opinion is based on profiles that we, you know, you, you might need to start taking off some weight of the position based on this thing to pull back again. And you may be able to catch uh, even a better buying opportunity a little bit lower. Um, and, you know, if it keeps going down, you've, you've saved yourself some money. And if we get back above these profiles, on our daily above 111, you know, it's okay to put the position back on. That's kind of the way, you know, trading works for me is, you know, we're, we're never going to, you know, be able to buy the lows or sell the highs. But, uh, you know, if, if you buy this breakout again above daily profiles, you know where to put your stops down below and, and you know, not a lot of harm. Okay, uh, RTN, let's look at that. That's another... Let's just pull up our channel in the same two time frames. Now, by the way, I hope everybody's still listening. There's a lot more to the puzzle than just looking at our profiles. I, you know, I have Navigator sitting down here, um, and I'm looking at RTN, <coughs> and I'm, you know, we we have higher highs here as price action is going up. 
the thing that's glaring me in the face that I don't like about this is we've got lower highs down here in a divergent kind of pattern that started versus higher highs here on RTN. That's the first thing that just hits me in the face. Um, forgetting profiles altogether, that hits me in the face. So let's look at our daily and let's look at, you know, we have started obviously breaking out again. If you look at our, our dynamic Vapster profiles, um, I, I mean, we've, we've obviously broken out of these a couple of times, but we've also, you know, broken down. It's let you know where, you know what, it's not okay to be long, it's okay to be short, where you could have saved some money based on that concept alone. But we've also, you know, broken out, we found support, we've broken out again, and now we're breaking out again. And the top of this box on our daily is 85 to 57. So what do we do now? Um, again, you know, some of the best things that you can do as a trader is, for starters, go to work every day. But also, you know, you, you got to I – mean, the way that I look at the markets, um, when I was in the board of trade especially, I knew that I was going to have about five big days a year and, you know, probably – 20 relatively big days a year. I was going to get killed a couple of days a year, obviously, but uh, a lot of the year I was going to get chopped up. <clears throat> and I kind of went into everything look, you know, with that mindset. And the, the reason I'm bringing that concept up right now to you, Boston Paul and RTN, is that, you know, sometimes you just, you got to let things go your way and let a fine wine kind of breathe, so to speak, because you don't know when you're, you know, some of these trades may be the big trades that make your whole year. Now, the good news is here is, you know, you can set your risk tolerance based on our profiles at below 85 stop out or below 83 based on complete breakdown of our daily profiles. Now, on our weekly, you've got something way down here at 77.93, <clears throat> and we kind of broke out of that twice. But, you know, I, I think that, the general idea here is just to stay long because we really have ha we don't have a reason to get out of this long at this stage. Stay long until you want to put some stops in below 85 or 83 in this instance on a daily, and let the daily tell you that it's not okay to be long and okay to be short here on our daily. So my, you know, on a long-term basis, my opinion is is that there's really not a lot of reason to get out of this trade at this stage, except that you do have this divergent action of navigator versus price action and if we get below the daily altogether at 83 then that more, more downside movement may be explored based on what I just looked at on our weekly divergence. Now these divergent patterns that happen on our navigator are not a great timing tool. These just develop over time and give you reason that the move up may be suspect. That's basically what it's saying. Thanks Boston Paul. Um, you know, I wish we could put every stock symbol in the world and every commodity and currency symbol in the world on our signal box here. Um, a lot of the people that, you know, trade in the institutional world use this, believe it or not. It's a very simple tool. We've got it on the Bloomberg terminal where you can actually input your own symbols, but a lot of them just use our web version because these symbols that, you know, you need to be aware of inflection points here, hang saying, right at the top of the box. We broke out the other day. We've come back and used to that top of the box as support. Um, you know, a lot of these indices are, you know, high beta, high beta situations for a lot of the stocks that are traded in the world. That's why we picked them to put on here. So, you know, if, if for instance, if you're trading Hang Seng stocks, uh, you want to know where the indice index is in general. And if the indice index in general is at support, and has already broken out and pulled back, you know your individual stocks in a high beta fashion may be moving north also. And uh, that's kind of the general concept here. Um, this yen trade has been a really fantastic breakout situation, which has also led the Nikkei north also, as you can tell. You know? Okay, well, we've been talking for a while here, and... If there are no more questions, I, I guess we're going to close the session. Uh, what I'm going to do is
put up, excuse me, this is my personal email address. And if you want to get some great information from the TFN Insight, please take a look at our signal box. And by all means, please get a subscription or a trial at least to the videos that I personally do every day on about 17 to 20 different markets that we feel are going to impact the global scene on a on a on an exchange traded basis every day. Uh, Nancy, yes, our software is run on the internet, and you could have it open along your side of your trading software. That's just in a web website type scenario, and you can get it right off the TFN Insight. I mean, I love this thing. It, it was actually created for me because I, and the premise here <clears throat> um, was to really not miss trades as the high probability setups were happening. So, you know, as we come down and look at the hang saying, okay, okay, I need to take a look at this, I drilled down into it with my chart, um, or I'd look at multiple time frame views. I mean, a lot of times I wouldn't even look at charts at all. I'd just use the signal box to look at inflection points on a long-term basis and see where the green shoots were allowing me to, to trade in that direction. So, but it's, it's provided a lot of sanity to me. <laughs> and it's also provided great trading opportunities. Well, I'm going to close the uh, the webinar now. You've been a great audience. I've enjoyed this, and I hope you guys will get some value out of some of the things we spoke of today.